Okay. Welcome to the Node and Oracle Database Office Hours for September 2019. Thanks for joining everyone. This is the month of our Oracle Open World. We, of course, are an open source project and anything we say or do can't really be held against us. Uh, so online, we have Dan McGann and Blaine Carter, evangelists for scripting languages and JavaScript and various other kind of cool technologies, hot with uh, soldering irons and things like that. Mm -hmm. Anthony Tuninga, who's creator and maintainer of the CX Oracle Python driver and uh, has done most of the work recently with the Node Oracle DB driver. Certainly knows the internals better than anybody else, I think, at this stage. Myself, a product manager, general sort of dog's body for the team. And obviously, talking to you now as uh, one of the roles that I do in terms of outreach and in reach. We do uh, customer outreach to try and work out what you want. So please do tell us what you want. We work on Oracle upcoming features, which we can't talk about, to try and make sure they work well for you. And uh, obviously, try and help customers where we can. For people who haven't used Zoom before, there's a chat feature hidden somewhere. You can just chat, particularly if you ask questions in advance when we get to the end. We'll be ready to answer them without any extra delay. There's an icebreaker theme, which this month is going to be working with Docker and Node.js that Blaine is going to talk to you about. And this is last month's slides. So I have uh, neglected just in this morning without my breakfast to uh, uh, put the correct slide in there, but I will rectify that later. So this month, we're going to talk about Docker and Node.js, and I will stop sharing and throw it over to Blaine to run his presentation. All right. Uh, howdy. I haven't really talked a whole lot in these sessions before, but I will go over a post. Let me put the link in the chat. So last week I put up this post in the chat on how to connect to the Oracle database in different varying modes from a Docker container running a node application. So what I'm going to do is, let's see if we share the right screen here. All right, you see my pretty face like two or three times now? There you are. Um, is that showing up, Chris? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, so here's the, the post. Uh, you can go through if you want to actually go through code examples and run this. Uh, it all works perfectly. Uh, if not, it's probably my fault. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a very, I'm going to use a very simple node app that consists of these two files. So the dbconfig file, uh, .js file is simply setting up some uh, ex uh, exports to for your connection information for the application. And then the server JS file is going to require the uh, Oracle DB uh, driver and the information from that other file. And then it's just simply going to make a connection and then select the current timestamp from dual just to prove that the connection works. At that point, it will console log that the results out to the screen and then um, basically close the connection. So um, no big uh, fancy script there. Let me get over here. Uh, I like to use a very simple, when I'm, when I'm doing one type of a concept, in this case, I'm doing how to connect from a node app inside a Docker container up to the database. I like to keep the node app as simple as possible to rule out using you know, too many weird things that might be problems in the app. So just to show you that the app is working, Here's the server JS. Here's the DB config. I have already run an NPM install to get the driver installed. So if I just do node server JS and run that, um, I messed up my things here. Let me. So, so while you uh, sort that out, let me just go back a little bit and talk a little bit about Docker. So, Docker is a containerization technology. Um, it differs slightly from VMs, and Docker really you you tend to run on one machine, you tend to build a solid image. You tend not to log into that image. If you want to make any changes, you just rebuild a whole new image. So you have this kind of immutable uh, machine concept, a container concept. 
Um, from that container, then you can, sorry, from image, from that image, then you can start a running container. From that container, you can start and stop. And, and once you delete that container, then anything which was stored in it gets uh, thrown away. And there are obviously ways that people get around that. There's something called volumes where you can mount external information, save that information uh, for later use by perhaps a different container or shared between containers. Have I talked enough, Blaine? Are you back? I, on? I'm, uh, I'm back. Okay, so what okay. happened there, uh, how I messed that up, about an hour ago, I got a, a notification that we were having this session today. I thought today was Monday uh, due to the holiday we had here in the U.S. yesterday. So I didn't have anything ready, so I built everything from scratch. And in doing so for my, uh, for these pieces down here, I overwrote these pieces up here. So now I reset the environment variables. Uh, I did that off screen just so uh, you don't get to see my uh, username and password. And then now I will do node server.js. And this is simply making a connection to just a standard cloud database, just a username, password, and the connect string is using the IP address colon port, you know, the standard simple uh, connect string. So nothing fancy there. And to, and to be really clear, that's not using Docker at this stage, right? That's right. Just, this is like just that. running the Node app. So I'm just doing node server.js. And then to show you my uh, images minus A, let me show you here. The image, I pre-built the Oracle database, uh, the Oracle XE image in a Docker container for the second step of this, uh, mostly because that takes about 40 minutes to go through all of the stuff and uh, I have a previous post on that website, on that, on that blog, that'll walk you through how to do that if you want to do that. And then as part of that, it pulled down this Oracle Linux uh, container. So these are the only images that are in, or not container, image. These are the only images that are in my system right now. And if I do a Docker um, a PS minus A, you can see that I have my XC database is running in a Docker image in the background. And sorry, had to cough right there. All right, so so far that's all I've done is I have the Node app running, and there is the Node app and the DB config. Those are both in the blog post. You can pull those down and run them. So now I have this Docker file. And so if you're not familiar with Docker, the Docker file is simply a set of instructions that installs or runs or does whatever you would normally do in a, if you had an empty machine and you wanted to start something up, this would be basically the command you would run to get that working more or less. And as you get into Docker, you'll understand what I mean by more or less. So first uh, command up here, I'm building this from the Oracle Linux uh, slim image. I'm going to define a working directory where all the magic is going to happen. This add command will copy the JavaScript files from my local machine. So down here, it will copy these two JavaScript files into the working directory. And then here, I, uh, of course, you always want to update whenever you start something new. So I'm going to update my Linux install. And then these lines through here will install. Uh, Node.js. Once that's done, this will install the Oracle Instant Client 19.3. I'd like to do a little cleanup. Here it will output the Node version and the NPM version that was just installed up here. And once that's all done, then it will simply do NPM install Oracle DB. And then just for fun, I echo out installed. So this is a, a very simple Docker file, nothing fancy here, just uh, installs Node and builds the app. And then down here, when this, contain, when this image gets run in a container, this is the command that it's going to execute. So this will do the same thing that I had just done here with uh, Node server JS. It will do that. But as part of the DB config, it's going to be looking for some environment variables inside the Docker container. And so this is how it's going to know which database I'm connecting to. All right, so let's go back over to here. So I'm gonna, first up, I'm gonna connect to just a typical, a typical connection. I'm connecting to just a standard 
a cloud database on the Oracle Cloud. This could be a database you have in your server room or on your, your desktop, just a regular connection. So I'm gonna issue the, uh, oh, first, oh, missed a step. So first I have to build the image. So that Docker file that I uh, just walked through, that needs to become a Docker image. And so the command for that is Docker build. I'm telling it no cast, force remove, that cleans up after itself. And then I'm gonna tag this image uh, with the name node underscore example. And the dot simply means the Docker file is in the same directory as I'm currently executing the command. In. And so is that, I'm gonna scroll back up here so you can see a little bit what's going on. You can see the output as it went through. It started out with that first line, set the working directory. Uh, down here is where we're doing all of the yum update install. You can see it doing a standard. If you're familiar with Linux, you can see it's just a standard install like you would what you would expect. Um, it's going to do a little bit of an update. This might take just a second. The the thing about the no cache, I guess, is you're doing it here so people can see exactly what's going on. But if you do have caching, if you just take that option out, the no cache option out, then there's a sort of uh, commit point for formed after each I don't know, I forget what they call it but um, a particular point of time and you won't actually if you want to rebuild the image have to pull everything down it will have have done that and be able to use that from the cache the next time you try and rebuild the image if you want to change or tweak something yeah that's what, a great thing about docker is it remembers the different layers and as you put in the different commands it won't redo stuff that you haven't changed so we're almost done here I debated whether I was gonna have this pre-built or run it. I figured it's not really taking that long. So at least when I run it, no one's watching, it goes really fast. Almost done, load the plugin, now it's installing Node. That one's done. It's installing the instant client. I think it skipped real fast, somewhere in there is the uh, output where it said what version it was. All oh, right there, so this is saying what version of Node and what version of NPM. Um, I get the warning because I'm not dealing with all of that, but it still works. And installed says it's done. Now I'll let go of my cursor. Okay, there we go. All right, so I just created an image. So now if I do Docker images, you'll see that now I have this uh, Node example that I just created. So I'm not going to recreate this image for the rest of the demo. This is just going to stay as it is, and I'm going to run a new container off of this image. So this part will stay static. And so the first one, I'm going to say Docker run. So I'm going to run a container based off this image. I'm going to call it typical node example. I'm going to set some environment variables, the dash E is setting inside the container is going to be this, these three uh, environment variables inside the container, but I'm setting them to, on this side, these are environment variables that are outside in my machine. So these are the environment variables that I moved the screen off because I didn't want you to see them because it's got username and password stuff. All right, so I'm going to execute this command and that's going to take that image, build a container out of it, issue that node server js command and before i can finish explaining you can see the output right here it connected to my cloud database just a, a regular um just a regular connection and so let me show you docker ps uh, this shows you the containers no, let me do a minus a uh, ps just shows you the running containers this one shows you that here's my new container it was created and exited. I could rerun that if uh, you really want to see the timestamp again. But now I'm going to connect to the Docker XE database. So that's this one. So before we do that, there is one extra little step that let's go back into here. You'll find this in the blog post. Let's get down not too far. All right, so if you think of Docker containers like they are apartments inside of an apartment complex, 
than the way that you can have the Docker containers talk to each other inside of the building and not expose anything outside of the, the building is by using a Docker network. And so I have already run Docker network create. I think I named mine BCnet uh, in here. Let's see. Oops. I should really turn that off before I start. All right. Uh, so right there you can see that I named the network BCnet. And so let me turn off the volume completely. Go away. All right. Sorry about that. Um, it seems to I'm always the one that interrupts my own stuff with uh, phone calls. So having the network created, Docker network uh, LS. So you can see I have a bunch of different ones created. I'm going to be using this one. And that's just simply bridging the, the internal Docker containers to each other. So the difference between this command and this command is I added in the, the network saying that you can use, that you can connect to each other inside. And so to show you the... So, so Blaine, did you do, have to do the same on the database container? No, so I haven't touched the database container at this point, and I okay. haven't touched the image for the, the node example. Uh, okay. The environment variable, I can show you this one because it's no big deal, um, that I'm changing the connect string to, Oracle XE is the name of the container inside, I don't want to save that, let me get rid of that and just do, uh, Docker PS minus, actually just PS will do. So you can see the name of the container is Oracle XE. So when I want to set up my connect string, I'm going to connect to just the name of the container, port 1521, because that's exposed internally. And if you don't want to expose your database externally, you what you would normally do if you did want to is you would do something like this, where you'd set a dash P and give it a port. If you don't give it a dash P when you start up your database container, separate container, then you can still get to it as long as they're on the same network. But if you're outside of the Docker, think of the apartment complex, if you're outside of the apartment building, you cannot get into the database. And so this is kind of a way to keep your database a little more secure. So let's go ahead and run that. Other than that, I've just uh, pointed it. You'll notice the environment variables on this side. I'll say Docker because I put the uh, containers over there. Oops, it's not going to run real good if I leave garbage in my prop. Garbage in, garbage out, right? All right, here we go. So that one changed and created a new container that I named Docker Network Node Example, and it used the network command and then these just pointed at the new environment variables. So if we look now at docker ps minus a, you'll see now we have the docker network container. So I have two different containers. If I were to fire either one of these up, they would connect to their uh, respective databases. All right, so that's a typical database connection. This is connecting to Docker. And so now the fun one, connecting to a database with a little bit more security on it. So the autonomous databases, uh, the ATP and the ADB databases, and things like Exadata Express, they all use uh, an Oracle wallet. And I'm not gonna run through all the steps on how to set up a wallet, but if you have an ATP database, you go into the command or the control panel, and there'll be a button where you can download your wallet. You're going to extract it into a specific directory. So once you take that zip file, I have extracted my zip file into this directory okay and so and that's your that's your directory on your host machine yep. this is my local home v carter uh, oracle wallet creds blaine projects so inside of that directory is now that zip file expanded or extracted and so one thing you need to do after that is you go into that directory and you find the sqlnet.ora file and you need to make this change where you tell it where the wallet location is going to be. Now, if you think of it this way, I'm going to map this file so that it's, that it's inside of my Docker container, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But once it's inside the Docker container, the Linux operating system inside there is going to have a directory mapped that's called wallet 
that points to this volume. And I'll come back to that. But this directory needs to be set to whatever the Linux environment or whatever your OS is, I'm talking inside Docker, to whatever the environment that you're running it in thinks the directory is going to be for those extracted files. And so just remember that I set wallet here and we will, I'll show you what that means here in just a second. Okay, so after having made, let's see, download the zip file, extract it here, modify the sqlnet.ora file and point it to here because what this is doing here, this command with the dash B, is this is saying that when I run this Docker container, I want to mount a volume inside the Docker container that points to this directory outside of the Docker container. So these are files on my host machine. And then the mapping, the colon here says mapping internally, I want the Docker, oops, I don't wanna do that. I want the Docker container to call that directory wallet. So inside the container is gonna be a directory called wallet, but it's gonna to point to this outside one. So if, after I run the Docker container once, if I go back into this directory, and I monkey with those files, the Docker container doesn't know that those are external, so it's going to break. So you, once you've set this up, you don't want to go back into the SQL net and change it somewhere else. Um, but, but you can change other things, right, if you wanted to in that right. volume. So a really useful thing that, that I've been experimenting with lately with the volume file is I will set up, uh, let's say I'm going to make a node uh, project and I want to run it in a Docker container and I want to set it up using something like PM2 so that anytime I change the code it just restarts the app but keeps it running in the Docker container. I can mount a volume inside of the Docker container that points to the files on my hard drive and I can edit away and every time I save a file there instead of having to rebuild the Docker container from scratch, because remember, the Docker images and containers are supposed to be static. So rather than having to rebuild all of that, it just reboots as if I had uploaded it to a server. And then once I'm done developing, then I'll make a new container where it's not actually a mapped volume, I'll copy the files. In. But there's all kinds of little fancy tricks you can do with a volume. In this case, the reason that I'm do using this as a volume rather than the other option, which the other option would be um, back in the Docker file where I had, where I'd done this, where I said add some files into the Docker container. If I had set a line in here that says add my wallet, my credentials into the Docker container, or even into just this would put them in the image, and then I push this image up somewhere, those credential files are in the image. So anybody who pulls down that image has a copy of your credentials, okay? So that's why you don't want to push your credentials into the image or into the container. All right, so that was kind of the long-winded explanation of this. Um, so I'm gonna do a Docker run. I'm gonna do a name just like before. This time I'm mapping a volume called wallet to an external directory where my wallet is. I'm going to set up the same three environment variables as I had before. Uh, in this case, notice that it says underscore ATP. There are different values on my machine. And then the, I'm gonna add a new environment variable called TNS admin, which you probably all heard of before. And I'm gonna point that to wallet. So as a bonus tip for this particular one, if you would rather make a typical connection to a regular database, but just use your TNS names file, you could add this environment variable up here and then just reference your TNS names file like normal. Okay, so that's just an extra trick. That's not really something I intended to show here. And I don't need that. So I'm gonna take the port off. All right, so let's make sure, or let's see if this works. All right, so what that did there, was it created the container, it mapped the volume to my wallet. And just to show you, um, let me go in here and say docker ps minus a. So you'll see I now have another um, container, another docker container, but I'm going to nuke that one real quick. 
So that one's gone, and I'm going to show you what happens. I'm just going to throw an X in here and save that. Go back over here. I'm going to rerun the same command. Okay, so that time, remember when I was talking about the SQL net or a file, this directory, Waxolit, however you say that, doesn't exist inside of the Docker container because I called it wallet. So let's get rid of that failed container. And so if I put the X here now, so it is going to actually create that directory. And update your that wallet. One as well, there we go. Yeah. And so I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave this the same way and I'm gonna change those two. And now when I run it this time, now it works. So let me put all that back so I have it for all right. Okay, so that's the three different ways that I cover in that blog post on how to connect to an Oracle database. I noticed that I never rebuilt the app, the original image. I never changed anything in there. I simply modified environment variables. Uh, I added a network and I added a TNS admin, a new environment variable with a volume. So when I'm creating my containers, I don't have to mess with my original node app. Where this comes in handy is if you're going to deploy, say, to Kubernetes, what you would do, let's go with the hard one, what you would do is you would take that wallet file and extract it into, say, a, um, you know, a, a document storage volume somewhere in your cloud and your in your cloud account, and then this part right here. However, you get to that. This is how you would map. And I'm not an expert on Kubernetes yet. I'm still working on this, but you would map this part of it to that uh, container uh, where you stored your wallet. And then you would set these environment variables, whichever version you're using, you would set those inside of Kubernetes before you spin up the uh, uh, pod. And you can, that way you can deploy the same app in Kubernetes and connect to multiple things uh, without having to change the app. Because whenever you change the app, you run the risk of breaking your code. But, all right, let me pull chat back up and, uh, where did my, there it is, chat. All right. Are there any questions? All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing then, and I'll turn it back over to you, uh, Chris. Yeah, let me, uh, sorry, <laughs> excuse me, let me just show one thing or a couple of things quickly. Um, one is, uh, I also had a blog post, an older blog post up about some of this uh, with not as much detail as Blaine, but I put one update yesterday based on some user questions. So Blaine and I had originally used the Oracle Linux Slim, Oracle Linux 7 Slim, so Slim being you know, the smallest possible uh, Oracle Linux container. And the Oracle land, we kind of would recommend that because it's the one we test. It's the one we, you know, fix the bugs and all that sort of stuff. But some people do want to use other containers for whatever reasons. And this one's using the, the node, you know, the official Node.js project containers using a particular version of Node.js. And, you know, this is the, the version of the, uh, the Debian operating system. Um, so in, in this case, we don't have the advantage of using things like the RPMs directly. We can't just use a yum install. So here, this is one, one uh, magic line, long line there, um, just using a straight wget to the URL of the RPM itself, and then running alien because we're in a, a Debian world and RPMs are not native. So we're converting and installing that RPM, uh, running the script so that the library search path gets updated automatically, as is the case now with 19.3. You no longer have to manually do that and then a little bit of cleanup afterwards. Um, but that's effectively the way to do it. Install alien, you need lib AIO. As uh, always, that's not gonna get pulled in automatically. Again, unlike the yum case where it would have done the dependency resolution for you with a, a yum on the on the uh, Linux, Oracle Linux side. Uh, so we manually do that, manually do the wget, but effectively it's the same as, as Blaine did. So that's up there on my post if you care about that. Um, 
The other thing I just wanted to briefly go over, and I mentioned Oracle Open World. So we have a program guide for anybody who's coming to Oracle Open World this year of things which, you know, my immediate sphere out of the 15,000 odd um, presentations, actually I don't know how many presentations, but there's a, you know, 100, 100 parallel <laughs> presentations at least in each slot. So these are the, the various things which are going on. There's some interesting things with uh, location happening. Um, Python and Node, great things for, for working with spatial data features. Uh, Dan is running a lab somewhere on Node APIs. Unfortunately, some of that clashes with some of our other sessions, but we'll certainly be in attendance where we can. And uh, we're also running a Python hands-on lab for people who want to do some contrasting and comparing. And if that URL at the top is a little too hard for you to read, just copy this one, tiny URL, app dev, OW19 is the, uh, the shorthand way to get to it. Maybe uh, drop that in chat. I could drop that in chat. It's a new technology, gosh. Um, so, uh, to do, and I better send that to everyone and not just to Dan. So, anyway, that, that's in chat now. Um, but certainly, if you're at Open World, we'll have a demo booth as well down on the demo hall area. Um, come and say hello. So with that, you see I've updated the slide. With that, if anybody doesn't have any questions, I haven't seen anything, do we want to call it a day? Sounds good to me. If you Sounds come good. up with questions later on what I covered, uh, comments are open on that blog post, uh, post them there and I will do my best to answer. So. Thanks everyone for attending this month's office hours. We will probably talk to you in, in October. Bye. See ya. Bye bye.